as I said to you earlier on, you know, we as children of God, we are so privileged. No religion in the world has what we have. Well, that is because we're not a religion, okay? We are people of covenant, and covenant is relationship. It's not religion. We're not striving to please our God. We can't. He's too holy for us to please Him. But He sent His only Son, who was holy enough to please Him. So He became that holy sacrifice on our, our behalf. And through that sacrifice and that blood that was shed, God the Father took that blood and He sealed this covenant. And we, you know, we're busy studying covenant on uh, Tuesday nights and running parallel with what we're teaching on Sundays. But this, this, this is going to just, this session is just to help you keep these scriptures on mind and uh, listen to this at home as often as you can. Because that demon of infirmity is doing its rounds at the moment. Now, the only thing that you can combat the enemy with is the Word of God. Are you listening? It can be the worst situation in your life. The Bible, the Scripture is the only thing that he's afraid of more than anything else because you know, he knows that it's already written, it's sealed in the blood. You understand? So even when he went to tempt Jesus, what did Jesus say to him? It is written. You understand? So that is why the word of God to us is always important, especially in this season right now with what's going on with this flu and all of that. And uh, we really don't know what's going on. There's so much of bad things happening, corrupted people out there, corrupted governments, corrupted, you know, government officials, corrupted doctors, corrupted hospitals. The private health care system is the most corrupted system in the world, in case you didn't know. The, 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 the government health care system is still stable. It's still decent, it's still good. Far beyond the private. I'm serious, because if you have a problem, I'm just saying for now, and then you go to one of these local clinics here, they follow protocol. They're not doing, this, you're doing you a favor or anything of that nature. They've got, a, they've got protocol. They just follow one, two, three, four, five. They stick to that list. Throughout your treatment. So I've spoken to people personally that said to me that they, there's a lady that, uh, that uh, she's, she's, got, she's got medical aid. She doesn't use the medical aid anymore. She goes and sits there at the clinic. Because the sickness that she was struggling with she says the medical aid was making her more sick. And she was keep going and keep going and keep going until this one day somebody told her about the clinic and then she decided, well, she took uh, a public transport and went there very early in the morning and sat there for most of the day. Finally, when they were done with her, she says she's, she's better. She never felt so good. You know, in a long time. That is because they, they follow protocol. Private healthcare system used to be the best. But now with the, what's going on, uh, okay, let's not spend time to talk about that. The thing, most important thing is, it doesn't matter what healthcare system it is. We already have our own healthcare system. Somebody pay, paid with his life for it. Say amen. Someone gave his life so that we can have life. Someone gave his body to be broken, to be punished, to be bruised, to be hurt, all that so that our bodies can be well. It's amazing. So now, yeah, in Isaiah, this is a very popular portion of scripture. Uh, in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5, this is what Isaiah says. This is now, what? It's... Uh, 700 years, between four to 700 years, okay, I can't quite remember, between four to 700 years before Jesus Christ came to the earth, as I prophesied this. This is what he said. 
but he was wounded for our transgressions, talking about Jesus. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. If you read that, that verse of scripture alone, I tell you what this is, it covers like everything about us. It covers everything, even our weaknesses. Like he was wounded for our transgressions. What are transgressions? Sins, things that we do wrong, things that we've done wrong. He took the punishment for that. All right? And one of the greatest trans uh, transgressions is that uh, is rejection of God. He took the punishment for that too. So he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for what? For our iniquities. Iniquities are not the same as transgressions. Iniquities are hereditary. You know, hereditary. Do you know children suffer consequences of their parents' sins and grandparents from the third and fourth generation? Are you aware of that? And some of those curses follow the bloodline. It follows the children. And then if there's someone in that bloodline gets saved, they use the power of God and they break that curse. You understand? So Jesus Christ was wounded for that. He was bruised for that also. Say amen. amen. All right? And then the chastisement, the punishment for our peace, for your peace and my peace, was on him. Jesus Christ suffered for my peace. And by his stripes, we are healed. Look at how many things in one verse of scripture. He took care of the transgression. He took care of the iniquity. He took care of the peace. And now he took care of the sickness. Four things in one verse of scripture. I mean, that is really wholesome. Now, no one can quote that scripture to you. No one can quote that scripture to you unless they experience it. Unless they know Jesus Christ as Lord. A person unsaved can't come and quote that scripture because they can't make it personal. You and I, we can make that thing personal. You can walk around in your house when you're unwell and keep quoting that to yourself. Oh Lord Jesus, you was wounded for my transgressions. You was bruised for my iniquities, Lord Jesus. The the, the, the punishment for my sin, uh, for, for my peace was upon you, Lord Jesus. By your stripes I am healed. You know, you keep walking around in your house and you, and you start quoting that scripture, that demon of sickness will leave you. I guarantee you that. That verse of scripture is very powerful. So why I'm doing this today quickly, so that you can have these scriptures ready on hand, on your phone, and you can start, you know, listening to this message again and using it for your benefit. And then here in uh, Psalms 103, talks about, uh, talks about David's psalm from verse 1. It says this, Psalm 103, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all our iniquities, who heals all our diseases. Say amen. amen. Now, ignorance of these verses of scripture is not helping anybody. We have to have knowledge of it. You know, you have to have knowledge of it. If, if, if you are radical enough, you'll go and put this in your, your computer, type it out, print it out, and put it on your wall at home. Put the scriptures on your bedroom wall, put it everywhere. So every time you go by, you're reading this thing. I'm telling you something, you've got weapons against the enemy. You do not have to fall dependent on anyone else because everything you need in this life, especially for good health, Jesus Christ has already paid for that. He's already paid for that. So let's look at another one. Psalm 107, verse 20. 
He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. He sent his word and he healed them. The power of the word of God. You see, that's why um, we, have to, we have to speak the word to ourselves. We have to speak the word to ourselves. People don't know how important that is. You've got to speak the word to yourself. Quote scriptures to yourself. Quote it loud enough so that you can hear it clearly enough. And sometimes it's, you know, you might not have the time to keep going and getting your Bible or putting the chat on or listening to the message. That's why it's so nice if you can just have, you know, uh, have it stuck to your wall or wherever. Have some of the healing scriptures, the important ones that you believe that's, 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 that will help you. And that's powerful enough that you will help you, it'll help change your mind, it'll prepare your mind for action. Read it every single day. Now, when you're doing this, you're speaking it out. You speak it out. When you speak the word, you hear the word. So the Bible says God has sent his word. And what did he do? He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. The word of God is very, very, very powerful. That is why we... You've got to like if you're gonna if you want to hold on to anything right now, hold on to the word. Hold on to the word. If you sometimes you might not have enough energy to to you know maybe sit up and read the Bible for hours and whatever it is, but there are so many so much of material available at the moment. Instead of uh, you know watching. Uh, Anything else, you understand? Instead of watching anything else, rather put, put a good preaching message on. Put, put someone that is a, that's teaching faith. Even if you go on to our YouTube channel, there's so much of messages there in the living faith <coughs> segment. There's so much, I mean, going back a long time now. So if you, if you can just... Listen, keep listening. The more you hear the word, the more you speak the word, the more powerful that word of God will become for you. And I like what he says here, this, uh, this a prophet. Zaya the prophet. Now we just read that verse 5 from here, but I just want to read to you from verse 1. Who has believed our report? And to whom has the harm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness, and when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrow, sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken smitten by God and afflicted. Verse 5 again. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we... Let's read this one account here from Matthew 21. Then the blind and the lame came to him in the temple. And he healed them. But when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying out in the temple saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant and said to him, 
Do you hear what, the, what these, are, these are saying? And Jesus said to them, Yes. Have you never read? Out of the mouths of babes and nursing infants, you have perfected praise. And then he left them and went out of the city to Bethany, and he lodged there. Now that, that is a very powerful account because that day wasn't a normal, ordinary day for him. Because he did something that I didn't, know, didn't expect him to do. He went and toppled everything in the temple that day. Because the people were not worshipping God right. They were money changers. They were doing business there. And they, he was upset. He said, well, this, you know, my father's house should be called a house of prayer. But you're making it a den of thieves. But what happened now, not everybody got upset with him. Only the business people got upset with him. And uh, But the rest of them, the people that came, came to him, yeah, the people that came to him, got healed, the lame, the blind. So, so what did that do? That stirred up the hearts of people in faith. Now, this is, sometimes you see there are, there's, there are there's subject matters in the Bible. And oftentimes we've got to have to take those subject matters and study them. And I realized that we I don't think we spend a lot of time even here in this ministry, you know, studying, studying uh, healing, for instance. We didn't spend too much of time. But we have seen a lot of healing. You know, we've seen a lot of healing pray take place in our ministry. Just l last week, when was it? Can't remember which day. Tuesday. Monday, sorry. This, this person was in a very, very bad state. And the Lord instantaneously delivered this man right in that hospital bed. So it's not like we're not seeing. We see healing taking place in a, you know, in a great way. We've seen big miracles take place. Supernaturally. But we have not spent a lot of time on the subject matter. That's what I'm saying now. If you, if you would just make it a subject matter to you, study healing. Get all the healing scriptures, you know, from your, uh, even get it on your phone as well. Go into your Bible app and, you know, uh, and search healing scriptures. And there's a lot of healing scriptures. And then you can just go and read them and read them and read them and uh, read them aloud to yourself. Now, don't, you don't have to do that only when you are sick. Listen carefully. We as Christians, we, we need to stop living for ourselves. We cannot live for ourselves anymore. We've got to live our life for others. The world says they can't do that. But we know we've been ordained to do that. So in other words, if you equip yourself with the healing scriptures, what a big help you're going to be to other people. When somebody comes to you and they're not well, what is going to be your first response? What is going to be your first response? Because you know the scriptures. You know you can speak that scripture out and that, that uh, individual can be touched by it. But one simple verse of scripture, where did it come from? It came from inside of you because you got equipped. You have equipped yourself with healing verses of scripture. It's important, believe me, in this time and this age when there's so much of hopelessness around, there's so much of bad things going on, you know, and hopelessness everywhere. And then people are hoping, you know, that life is going to get better on the earth. Because life is too hard for them. But only one thing we can provide them with 
is assurance in God's word. So now if you have the healing scriptures inside of your heart, you can take it out and give it to them when they need it. Just like, just like salvation. So make this, make, because I believe in this restoration revival. God's not going to just use me now. Throughout my, my life in ministry, he's been using me. I can't count the number of people that, that he healed through me. You know, all kinds of diseases, cancer cases and gangrenes and all kinds of things. You know, boils disappearing and all of this. I've experienced that. But it, this is not just me on the center stage here now. In restoration, revival, all of you, prepare yourself because that's what God, where God's going to use you to be a blessing to other people. There's be so many people coming that we'll need all of you to go get to work. You understand? So you can't just say, no, I'm going to church and going home. No, no. You're not going to church. You are the church. You understand? You came here to get equipped. Now you go back home equipped. Now you go back with this message. You go back with these verses of scripture now. And now you sense now that you're some, getting some kind of a funny feeling in your nose or whatever it is. You rebuke this thing. Say, I rebuke you, sickness in Jesus' name. Don't come. Don't. For he was wounded for my transgression. Jesus was wounded for my transgression. Are you listening? So you fight this thing. Fight it. Don't just sit back and just let what happen, whatever be, let it be. No. You stand up strong and you fight this thing and put an end. Put an end to it immediately. I can't tell you the number of attacks the enemy tries to put on me on a regular, regular, regular basis. I mean, symptoms like you can't believe it. And I am not a sick, sickly person. I know this is an attack. The Holy Spirit will tell me, no, that's the devil. And I'll tell you what, he is so perfect. He's such a blessing in my life. He will tell me, you know, he will tell me. <laughs> so three o'clock this morning, I coughed. So I went into the, I went into the bathroom to spit it out, you know. And I spat out, I say blood came out. So you could say I coughed blood. But something happened. I think this terrible flu I had affected something in my, in my gums. And uh, so, so I just went and sat on the bed, uh, back on the bed, and I said, like, Lord, what's that? Where did that blood come from? I'm telling you, this is how real he is. <laughs> he says, don't bother with that, son. He came from your gums. I said, yeah, thank you. So I went back to sleep. I'll tell you what, if it was somebody else, it was, would have been alarm bells. Why well, I'm saying you this, this is the level of my dependency on him. And he's fixed. He's so, he's so beautiful. He's so, so tender. He's so loving. I wonder why people don't have a relationship with him. You know, don't bother with that. That was that, that thing came off your gums at blood. I said, I'm okay. But I didn't sleep the whole night. I was praying and all of that. I didn't even, didn't even know how serious the matter was in the community until this morning. But anyway, let's read one more portion of scripture. Yeah, in Luke chapter 4, verse 18, Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. I know everywhere you read the Lord about the Lord, you must mention the poor. And if you notice that he mentions the poor more than wealthy people. It's not like he's against wealthy people. No, no. I think he's a shepherd, you see. A shepherd is always caring. So he, he talks about poor people a lot. Jesus Christ talks about poor people a lot. And he practically took care of them, you know that. The time when he was here for three and a half years on the earth, 
when he was uh, doing ministry here. They had a money bag. People used to give them money. All right? So Jesus had a ministry. He used to collect offerings. People used to give him money. And uh, what's his name? Judas. Judas was the treasurer. What do you think about that? I mean, he was the treasurer. And uh, John, John, uh, who wrote the book of the gospel, he says, yeah, Judas used to put his hand in that bag now and again. John saw him. It's recorded there in the Bible. So the time uh, when he went to betray Jesus, when the Lord told him, whatever you set out to do, go and do it now quickly. The disciples, John said, John said, no, uh, we didn't know where he went. We thought Jesus gave him instructions to go buy food or groceries for a poor family. Because they were doing that all the time. Jesus was doing that all the time. He was always buying food, taking care of the poor people with the money that was coming in. That's the kind of ministry he had. That's why you can't stand a church that never does things like that. I mean, they, they gloat about everything they got, but they cannot give anything to anybody, even to another church. You know, if they have a broken down equipment, to, they won't even give it to somebody who goes repair it and use it. No. I mean, they, they would rather throw it away or keep it. It just goes to show. But when you come to the Lord Jesus, the, the money that came in as, you know, in, in the ministry, they use it for themselves, for traveling, for food, and for accommodation in certain places they went, but they also used to find poor families and go and cater for the poor families. So, if, if you'll, you'll, you'll find a lot of this. Jesus speaks a lot about, Jesus speaks a lot about poor people. All right, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Now, oppression is a big word. Okay? Oppression is a big word. It, it covers a, a wide uh, range of things that happens in people's life. Sickness is a kind of an oppression. Disability is some kind of oppression. So everything the Lord Jesus Christ did, he now gave the power, the anointing for us to do it. 